Welcome or welcome back, friends and friends to be. How in the heck are ya? Hope you are all doing fantastic on this wonderful day. And if not, no big deal, because I'm about to turn that frown upside down by telling you about 10 of the stupidest ways that females have ever died. From a woman who took the ultimate cliff dive to another woman who had an unhealthy obsession with a soft drink. But before we get going, make sure you head on over to that like button and help it get into its spanks. That way it feels nice and pretty. And just so that the subscribe button doesn't feel left out, why don't you go over and help it zip up its dress until you hear that bell ringing loud and clear and you never miss a brand new video. Okie dokie, still a dokio. Let's meet some ladies. How could I make a list about stupid ways that women have died without including at least one selfie-related death? No worries though, because I promise to only tell one, otherwise that would be too easy. This one belongs to a French tourist who was visiting Grampians National Park in Australia. There's a beautiful spot called Baroka Lookout. It overhangs the side of a cliff and gives a one-of-a-kind panoramic view of the mountains and the town below. Our French friend must have decided she wasn't going to do a lick of reading on her holiday. Not even to read a sign. Which would have done her a lot of good, because the signs were warning signs. Also, she blew past a few safety barriers. No clue why those were there. Once she had reached the location where she wanted to take her pose, she tripped and fell 262 feet down the cliff. No one was able to help immediately, and it took six hours for first responders to reach her body. I have a hard enough time taking a selfie in my living room. Why even bother doing it somewhere dangerous? For safety reasons, when you're at a subway stop, there's lines on the edge that tell you not to get too close to the tracks. Now, I don't work for a subway, but I am almost certain these colored sections are there to serve as a warning so you don't, well, I don't know, fall off the platform and onto the tracks. That could be bad. And it was for one woman in New York. She was standing right on the very edge. Then her iPad began slipping. She could not drop that on the tracks. There would be no time to grab it. A train was coming, so she tried grabbing it before it was too late. All this motion had caused her to lose her balance. Then she slipped and fell onto the tracks. The train driver tried stopping, but it was already too late. Now, both the iPad and the woman are in pieces under the train. Some people are real die-hard thrill seekers. They love the adrenaline. They love the wind blowing in their hair. They love the smell of jet fuel. Yes, the smell of jet fuel. There's a beach in New Zealand right by an airport. It is a major tourist attraction. Many tourists come to the island and experience the thrills of the landing and approaching aircraft flying low above their heads and holding onto the airport security fence and standing in the jet blast of the large aircrafts taking off. Doing this, however, is extremely dangerous, as one woman found out the hard way. She was holding onto the fence, the jet blasted, and she was thrown backwards where she sustained serious injuries. She was rushed to the hospital where she expired. The force those things can put off are not to be messed with. And if common sense wasn't warning these people enough, then the clearly visible danger signs plastered everywhere should have done the trick. Then again, if you can't read, what good are they? Sometimes people just don't know when to stop talking. In this case, a boyfriend didn't know when to stop talking and start driving a little faster. And a girlfriend didn't know when to keep her ideas to herself and not say it out loud and then try it in real life. Boyfriend was driving girlfriend to work and he was going way too slow for her liking. She kept telling him to drive faster, but he didn't seem to be speeding up. That's when her idea came out of her mouth and the rest of her body decided to join in too. She basically made the joke we've all made before. I could walk faster than this, only she actually tried it. She opened the door and stuck her foot out before falling to her death. Investigators say the boyfriend was driving at highway speed, but they ruled the whole thing an accident. I guess if you can call stupidity an accident.
when you're sick to a certain point, it's probably best to listen to the doctor's advice. Falale had a heart and lung disease that was related to her being overweight. She had recently been discharged from the hospital with some new meds and a shiny new ventilator. The combination of the two would definitely help prolong Falale's life. She went home with her new things, but being true to her Samoan health ways, she almost immediately stopped taking her meds, instead taking a more traditional path. Now, all she had keeping her going was her ventilator. The thing about ventilators is, you need electricity to keep it going. Falale decided to stop paying her electricity bills around the same time she stopped taking her meds, resulting in her power being shut off, resulting in her ventilator not running, resulting in her death. Some jobs are a little bit more dangerous than other jobs, like working at a meat processing factory. Lucky for them, there are extra safety precautions required to ensure the complete safety of everyone while they are working. But when those safety precautions are ignored, it's hard to get out alive. After all, the things being processed at that processing plant are very similar in makeup to that of human flesh and bones. One woman was working at a meat processing plant in Pennsylvania when something happened. She wasn't paying attention to what she was doing, and she fell in. Other workers heard a weird grinding sound, followed by some screams, and they rushed over to turn off the machines. Firefighters arrived shortly. It took them 45 minutes to disassemble the machine and recover her body. Because nobody survives a meat grinder. That's probably why they have so many safety precautions. A woman had just won two concert tickets, and she couldn't believe her luck. So, she immediately called her best friend. Little did either of them realize they were in for more than just a concert experience. It's the night of the concert, and it was pouring rain. Our two friends are leaving the venue, trying to escape it. Instead of taking a shuttle bus, they decided to take a shortcut. This shortcut consisted of some wet grass, a six-foot fence that borders a road, three lanes of freeway traffic, a 100-foot median, another four lanes of traffic, another six-foot fence, a parking garage, a hike around a casino, and then boom, shortcut to their car, completed. Basically, it was a half-mile walk. They made quite a dent in their progress, too, until they made a dent in some cars. The first woman was struck in the first lane of traffic. The second woman didn't make it much farther, and since it was on a freeway, the cars didn't have time to stop before realizing what was happening. Both women ended up getting hit by two cars each before finally finding their resting place on the pavement. Never forget, stop, look, listen, or tomorrow you'll be missing. There are times when it's totally reasonable to save your pet, and then there are times when the odds are so stacked up against you that there's no possible way you could save your pet and survive yourself. If your dog falls down a well, save the dog. Stuck in a tree, save the cat. Fish fell down the drain, well then you better reach down there and grab that guppy. But if your dog is being mauled by an alligator, Sorry to say, if you are unarmed and also not Chuck Norris, then the alligator will win every single time. One lady from South Carolina saw her dog being chased by an alligator, so she went after it. She got in between the dog and the alligator. Sometime later, the woman's body was found. The alligator had passed on the dog when it saw the woman. She may have lost her life, but in a way her plan did work out. The dog managed to get away without even a single scratch. She just won't be able to spend any time with it anymore. Women will do anything, it seems, to lose a few pounds. And it feels like things are getting a little bit more ridiculous. Everyone has heard of fasting, but that usually includes drinking water. Why? Because you need water to survive. Without it, you will quite literally die. Two women from Russia decided to try a new version of fasting called dry fasting. It's just like regular fasting, but less wet. As in, you also don't drink anything. Nothing in your body at all. The two girls were missing for about a week before their bodies were found in their apartment. Detectives found some journals where they had been recording their dry fasting. This was their first time. When it comes to dry fasting, 
it's always everyone's first time. I wonder why that is. Women will do anything, it seems, to lose a few pounds. And it feels like things are getting a little bit more ridiculous. I have a hard enough time finishing one can before it goes flat. Natasha from New Zealand drank 10 liters of Coca-Cola every single day. That's the same as 2.2 gallons. For many, many years, she drank extreme amounts of it. Not only is all that sugar bad for you, but then you have the caffeine, which may help you stay awake through that afternoon lull, but in high amounts, it can do some serious damage to your heart. Natasha was all too familiar with the adverse side effects of too much caffeine. Her liver, they said, looked like someone who had been drinking alcohol, binge drinking, for years. She never drank other than Coca-Cola. She started having cardiac arrhythmias, which eventually is what caused her to expire. Maybe it's because I don't like drinking soda, but I can't even imagine how one person could drink an entire liter of cola in one day. Some people are now saying that Coca-Cola needs to warn consumers about the effects of caffeine. I think if anybody drinks more than 10 liters of Coca-Cola in one day, that's on them. Well, friends, that's all the time we have for today. I really hope you enjoyed our show. If you did, make sure you head on over to that like button, help it in its spanks so that it doesn't feel self-conscious about itself. And don't forget to zip up the subscribe button's dress while you're down there. Thanks so much. Uh, have you guys checked out the new merch yet? at trooptt.com. What about the uh, Kickstarter that my husband's doing? Have you checked that out? You know, if every subscriber donated just $1, we would surpass our goal and we could write this book for the kids. It'd be really cool. Thanks again for watching. Thanks for subscribing. And as always, stay safe out there. Troop TT.